Dear Fearsome Warrior, your comment caught my attention. Thank you for that. It prompts an introduction to a series that's coming up on shop usability, workspace usability. Basically taking stuff off of our minds that our shops can handle, our workspaces can handle, so our minds can do more interesting things. But first, you asked for a shop tour, so here's that. Thank you for saying I don't need to clean up, because that's pretty freeing at this point. I've been traveling a lot for work lately, but settling down, so I'm starting to clean up a little bit. But here's what my shop looks like right now. How did this stuff come to be? The drawers, the drawer handles, the organizer stuff, and the horizontal work surfaces. They came to be because of usability. Usability came to be because of limitations. Limitations came to be because I have a full-time job that is not this. My wife, she's not this, and my four kids aren't this either. All of these are more important than anything I'm doing out here in the shop. But they do cause some limitations, not just of time, but also of my mind. And here's what I mean by that. Time limitations are hard to address because there's definitely a hard limit on the amount of time we have. But the limitations of the mind, as it relates to the time that I spend out here, those things can be addressed and they can be addressed by usability. So what I mean by that is you take things off of your mind that your workspace can handle, that the tools can handle. And there's a lot of improvement we can do with our workspaces to make that happen. So I'm going to respond to your comments here and illustrate that. Let me be clear about something here. Usability is not organization. Organization was a really trendy word, and then Marie Kondo came about. I don't know what happened there. Still, usability is the main focus here. For the doer, the maker, if you're trying to get something done, usability is far more important than organization or Marie Kondo. Here's a statement I'm making about usability. Usability defies organization when it wants to, to get stuff done. Organization is definitely a part of usability, but as you'll see here in the next few minutes, I absolutely disregard organization sometimes for the sake of usability. I think it's really important when we're trying to take stuff off of our minds and put it on the workspace. Let me show you. All right, in your letter, you mentioned drawers, tray holders, and horizontal surfaces. I'm gonna start with horizontal surfaces because that's where stuff gets done. The rest of the shop ought to support the horizontal surfaces and the activities involved. So my shop is small, it's 20 by 24. It's not tiny by any means. It's much bigger if I keep my work surfaces clear at all times. And if I don't do that, stuff looks like this and inactive projects just pile up and get in my way. And that leads me to these other topics you ask about, the drawers and the tray holders. We'll explore those now. All right, I'm gonna try the GoPro mounted to my forehead approach because I think the first person sort of perspective will be very valuable here. I can't really see very well if I'm pointing at the right thing, unless I'm pointing here at the iPhone viewfinder thing. So bear with me. I'll try and at least be descriptive. First, the organizer tray rack shelf thing here. Nothing really groundbreaking here, but it is part of a bigger sort of idea. The bigger idea is a one-handed approach to accessing commonly accessed things. Sometimes we use two hands that can be really streamlined by having one hand access. So 
the dados help with that. If this is implemented throughout the shop, it becomes really, really fluid. So I can access the impact driver with one hand like this. And as I'm using it or screwing something in, I can access with the other hand this here with my left hand, which is natural to be getting these screws with. Put it up with one hand, my free hand, because this is holding the impact driver. So it's all part of a one-handed approach. The impact driver is there, the hammer one-handed with the correct hand, the mallet, you get the idea here. Screwdrivers, I use them in the right hand, they're right here. Furthermore, at my common clamping work surface, assembly work surface, these clamps accessible with one hand, put away a bowl with one hand, pivot these clamps, the quick clamps, accessible with one hand, these as well. All of that from an area that is within reach of my primary work surface right here. So it's very nice to have another hand free to hold the workpiece as I'm going over here to find the clamp, clamp it down. But there is a limitation with this. There is a problem with this that drove me to move some of the stuff I had here to drawers. So let me show you the drawers and how they solve a problem here. Before I know it, I have my work surface cluttered with the organizers. This is where drawers come in very handy. Drawers let me remove the lid and they're an extension of the horizontal workspace. And I'll get to the clutter here in a minute. It's not clutter, it's strategy. This drawer here contains a lot of parts that used to be over in this section here. This drawer here is full of prototyping things, things I've frequently used when I don't really know what I'm doing. But right here, screws, decking sort of screws, some drywall screws, washers. So as I get farther back in this drawer, start to get to the parts that I use a little bit less, but still, this is a big time prototyping drawer. Hex inserts, the T-nuts, toilet bolts, quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, some 3 eighths, the lock nuts, regular nuts, the washers, and you get the idea, the carriage bolts. So this here, is an extension of the horizontal workspace. So you asked about horizontal workspaces. I would consider this one. This is hugely beneficial. And look, all of this in less than one and a half inches. That's less than the thickness of a two by four. That's crazy. This I would consider a horizontal work surface. Go one deeper. This also is a major prototyping area for me. All right, I'm going to look at the lathe drawers, but I'll come back to the drawers here and the handles that you asked about and kind of review the rest of the drawers here. The lathe drawers are specifically designed for lathing. Got the lathe tools here, the chisels, and more lathe tools, adapters, stuff like that here. In four and a half inches of height, including the bases of the drawers, two inches, one and three eighths of an inch deep. <laughs> this holds a bunch of lathe related tools right under the lathe. To be honest, I would much prefer these design wise to be up here on the wall, but the space is too valuable. I was able to use these organizers there instead. The handles are specifically designed for the shallow drawers. This bottom one comes out farther so that I can get my hand in there easier. That's that. The handles, as I mentioned before, they're not just large handles, that's part of it, but they're also deposit slots for stuff I just don't really wanna mess with right now. As I'm working on a project, and I'm prototyping this, that, you know, whatever, I'm trying to figure something out. If I have to take a break to pull some washers off of this carriage bolt, pull the nut off this carriage bolt, figure out where it goes in here, sort everything, that's a serious interruption to my thinking process of whatever I'm trying to prototype here. I use this slot here to just sort of put them right in there and I'll worry about it later. So after a few months, this will become more cluttered and I'll just spend maybe three or four minutes sorting the things that are right here. This ended up serving more of a purpose for quick access stuff than I expected. Hot melt glue, Velcro, breadboard for soldering stuff, little baggies and batteries, those sorts of things. So this handle is really about freeing up my mind to focus on the job at hand on the horizontal workspace rather than sorting. Because I can sort later in just a couple minutes, but it allows me to free up the workspace really quick so I can keep focusing on, keep my mind on what I'm really trying to figure out. 
See what these are? These are simply organizers without the lids. Typically random sort of sizes of organizers that don't fit in a primary sort of system like this. So I planned on ending this with a drawer tour, but I think that this is long enough without one. And I think that a drawer tour would have enough substance to be its own video just fine. So let me know if you want to see that. I'll bump it up on the list. But at this point, I'm going to move on to a couple of videos about containers, uh, strategic container usage based on analysis of how I use them and how they kind of work with the workspace. Um, I do read comments at this point. So let me know if you have any questions. Maybe they'll turn into a video, who knows? 